could be a reason. Yeah. There's just better rocks. There's better know. rocks out there. You can find uh, a better rock. I also got my answer back from my phone, a friend. Oh, gosh. Okay. Are you guys ready? I'm ready. So you would think that potassium for manganite wouldn't have a color because manganese is in a plus seven oxidation state. Which means that there's no electrons in the d orbital. That's what I would think too. Yeah. Yeah. yeah right. That was <laughs> you would. You would have thought. Theory. <laughs> but because of the charge transfer from the ligand in the molecule, which is O2 minus, to the metal center, the way the molecule absorbs and reflect light differs, giving it its purple color. So what it is is the transfer of electrons between oxygen and the metal center makes it reflect light differently than the metal ion with no electrons in its outer shell. Hmm. It is cool. very cool looking. That's a very technical answer. I like it. Yeah. Yeah. Well, she's a chemist, so. Chemists are awesome. So they They're have, crazy. We have a bio question or rock question. Which one do we want first? No one's answering. You Coralie, pick. go. <laughs> Are the seamounts made from multiple volcanic eruptions over hundreds of millions of years, or is it just assumed that one event made the seamount? We can't assume any of that because we don't know anything about the rocks. So I think one of the there's a couple different ways that we can figure that out, though. So, um, but okay, I will say for one volcanic eruption, probably wouldn't be enough to make a seamount. Um, it'd have to be a really big eruption and probably something that would completely change, you know, the ocean uh, chemistry. However, uh, part of what we're doing is trying to figure that out. So Adam Sewell, who's the lead scientist on this cruise, is looking for fresh basalt rocks uh, to use for argon dating. And then there's a suite of geochemical analyses that you can do to better understand the mantle processes underneath, which can kind of tell you, like, about where the magma came from, the chamber, um, that sort of stuff. And would be able to tell you, oh, this is from the same place. So for instance, in Hawaii, like if you do these like suite of geochemical analyses on all of the Hawaiian islands, you'd be able to see that they're all from the same or a similar magma chamber. Could it be like one? technically one eruption but that just lasts like one slow eruption that lasted for a very long time yeah that's totally possible like the Pu'u'u'u eruption lasted 30 years right exactly what i was thinking about stopped, but then adam was saying that it started again so yeah but i don't think 30 years is long enough to make no, <laughs> no, it's going to have to be a very long eruption. Yeah, it would have to be really long and a lot of volume. So someone is trying to better my chances at seeing a giant squid, asking if you, uh, if we change the lights on Hercules so we can see bioluminescence, would we have a better chance at seeing the giant squid? Are they bioluminescent? I mean, do they have bioluminescent properties? Giant squid? Yeah. I'm not sure. Yeah, I don't know. Um, but it's unlikely that if, say, we turn the lights off, that we would attract or we would allow animals to come back towards us that might be actively avoiding the light just because the ROV makes noise. And uh, that could probably deter animals more than the light um, just because you know, the vibrations might be a warning. So. Uh, unless you get a really curious squid, you're probably not going to see one. This guy's um, waving at us. Hello. Zoom in, please. Yeah. In shallow water, we often uh, get squid attracted to us because of the light. Um, but I'm not sure if that would happen in the deep sea just because, you know, light might not be as attractive. But we do see a lot of fish and other animals um, that are more predatory using the light of the ROV uh, for hunting. So sometimes if you check out in the Argus view, you might see some fish hanging out about us, like rat tail fish. But um, I actually haven't seen any fish today. It's kind of wild to think that there could just be like a packed ring of life just like on the outside. You know, if you're looking at the Argus view, like just in that like black circle, there's just yeah. like tons of life I'm just that, hanging out it's totally how i i think of it 
I think I saw a comic like that once. Just like creeping as we're moving, it's moving. Yeah, it's just moving <laughs> away. And they're just like all watching us just outside of our light pool. It's like wolves in the forest at night, just outside of your sight. Mm -hmm. see, if you see a squid, it's too late. I heard a story about um, this cameraman who sat in a hide trying to film cougars. And he sat there for like five nights and they put a game camera facing him, like a one that could see at night. And there were just cougars sitting around his hide. Oh, gosh. <laughs> right outside of his view. It's incredible. Yeah, you only see a cougar when it wants to, when it wants to be seen. Yep. There's so many cougars near my house. I was going to say, don't you live in the densest population? In the world, yeah. Yeah. You you right in the middle of it. Yeah. You should get some game cameras, and put them around your place. Oh, totally, yeah. Uh, I've got a question about the bloop. Bloop. The mysterious deep ocean sound. <laughs> I don't know much about the bloop, fortunately. What? There's a high amplitude underwater sound detected by the uh, by NOAA in 19. 97. Just one they, sound once. Yeah, and they don't, oh, it might have been a couple of bloops, but they don't, don't know. Bloop. I like I'm, the name bloop. Yeah. yeah. Well, I'm confused. Wait, what's the question? <laughs> oh, they were just like, thoughts on the bloop? Like, oh, I don't know, I don't know anything about the bloop. Nobody knows the, anything about the bloop. The bloop. The bloop. Looks like the sound source was roughly triangulated to a remote point in the Pacific Ocean, west of the southern tip of South America. Just strange. Mm. Don't know. Yeah, well, thoughts on the bloop? I have none. Agreed. No thoughts. Yeah, I think this is uh, working better now. Yeah, it's a different time. 1544, this is... 44, yeah, this is 58. And you reset it at, uh, you reset it at when? 49. So if you're seeing stuff from before 49, it'll be different. Fixed. So we are halfway through this watch. We are, to reiterate, uh, this is the third dive of the Lu'ua'ea Hiki Kei Kualono Kai expedition. We are surveying unnamed seamount F, which is just outside, well, it's near the Shotakwa Seamount, which is just outside the um, Apahanamokua Kea Marine National Monument. So we're like, a uh, hundred and fifty, sixty something miles west of Kauai. I really need to look at a map and see exactly where we are. <laughs> it's been a while since I've checked it. What's this? What's this? What's this? A sponge. A sponge with a dot on it. The squatty lobby. A squatty lobby. It's like hobby lobby, but for sea life. That's how big the squatty lobster is. This one looks kind of brown. Is it dying? Um, the other one we saw was kind of, kind of sort of Is light brown pins? color. It might just be zoom, the way zoom, it looks zoom. when it gets old. Did you say zoom? Zoom, please. Yep. And then here's another one of those Munodopsis squat lobsters hanging out on top of this Calafacus sponge. 
Do you think this brown is just the color of it? I'm also yeah. um, exposing for the squat lobster, which is significantly brighter. Which, if it was more, it's, I mean, it's still a little more brown, but. Yeah, it's not as bright white, and I think that might just be a, um, its age making it look a little browner. It's just not keeping itself as clean. Needs a better self-care routine. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But you never know. It just could be that particular species of sponge. The other one we saw was the same color. Yeah, I find that I have a lot more questions than answers. I can tell you what things, what we think things are, but that doesn't necessarily mean that we know everything about what's down here. We are just at the tip of the iceberg, just learning little by little interesting facts about animals at this depth. And there is so much work to be done. There's so many questions that are just waiting to be answered. And hopefully today we'll be able to, you know, be on our way to learn just a little bit more about each one of these animals that we're viewing. And the rocks. I won't forget about the rocks, don't worry. And the rocks. Uh, Coralie, how many samples have we got from this dive so far? That's a question in the chat. Five samples. Five. All bio, or I got some rocks already? Yeah, well, the uh, watch before collected a cup coral. They got me a crust sample and a water sample. How nice of them. And then we did the rest. And we did the rest, <laughs> just to make it clear. Oh, sorry. We got six. We have six from this dive. Because I was like, that doesn't make sense. We collected three. Yep, we got a bathopathies, a chrysogorgia, and an anemone. And they slurped something, took some water, and took a rock? They slurped a cup coral. Oh, wait. You weren't asking. You were just saying. Yeah. Now. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> um, do we know what depth we want to sample our next rock and take Niskan at? Oh, okay, perfect. Three zero three nine. Oh, we're not getting there this watch unless we are. Well, we can get to a hundred meters. Where were we at the start of this watch? Three. We were wait, what, uh, three thirty two hundred something. I have it. Maybe not. Okay, well, we got that coral at 3365 meters. Okay. Wow. Yeah, so we've been really trekking. We've been moving. I'm okay, getting your rock sample. Don't you worry. While I do this distance measure on Google Maps, uh, what are scientists looking for in rock samples here, Coralie? Yeah, ding, so ding. there's two different things. I am looking for ferromanganese crust, um, and I've so I just changed what I'm looking for a little bit. So I'm actually looking for 
samples that have areas that are open to the water that don't have any sediment on top of it. So as you can see, there's a bunch of marine snow on top of it, which will affect my analyses. So I'm hoping to get something with a lot of surface area that not mar that like marine snow won't fall on. Uh, Adam Sewell, the lead scientist, is looking for fresh basaltic rocks that we could do argon-argon dating on. Uh, that's a little bit harder here just because these seamounts are pretty old and you can see they're pretty much entire all all of the ones we've seen so far are pretty much entirely encased in this ferromanganese crust, which means they're super old. And it's going to be hard to get a fresh basalt. Most of them are probably going to be altered. Does it alter the core or just the outside crust? It alters all of it on the inside. Wow. I can show you guys pictures. Well, not online, but... Well, Noah's having a seminar later today. Who is? That I will be presenting oh, at. Oh, Noah. Okay. And uh, I can show you what the altered inside of a basaltic crust looks like. It's hard to show people what they look like on the inside because our rock saw isn't very good. Um, but I might give it a try today to see if I can maneuver it a bit. But I do have pictures of older crusts that I've had before that have the altered basalt on the inside. Got some awesome questions about uh, ship life, which I will get to in just a second. But first, I am a just a hideous liar. We are about twenty five hundred miles from Honolulu, apparently. That doesn't sound right. That doesn't sound right. Yeah, it doesn't sound right at all. Two hundred and fifty nautical Two miles. Nautical miles, yeah. Two five zero yeah. nautical miles. Still That's double probably, what I said. But it's probably three hundred real miles. 300 real miles? Yeah. So Google, Google distance measure. You guys got some work to do. <laughs> this is not, <laughs> not right. Okay. Um, do rotations compete with one another for productivity? No. Yes. No. 100% chance. <laughs> we, are, we are just all doing the best we can out here. Nope, it's a competition. It's a competition. <laughs> We're better. Winning. Yeah. We are absolutely the best to watch. Actually, maybe you're right. The other watches don't even bother trying to compete against us. It's <laughs> true. <laughs> the clearly best watch. And none of them are awake right now, so none, none <laughs> will, will argue with us. I don't it's know. The There's some people who just like, never sleep. Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> this, yes, this expedition does end December 20th. Um, Let's see, does the ship crew head home for the holidays and the new year? Are any festivities ever hosted aboard? Have you guys ever had any, um, any, gosh, my brain just shut down. Any holidays on board? It was American Thanksgiving recently. Yeah, we last two years in a row we've had Thanksgiving. Um, it's been lovely. The, the, um, the cooks have done a really great job, and the steward, Marlene, they, and last year was Angelica. Um, decorating and making a nice turkey and, and trying to make it festive. It was good. And then if you have a birthday on board, they, they bake a cake, which is really fun. Um, they're awesome. The whole staff is. Yeah, and they play a birthday song I have never heard before. I mean, it's very appropriate, but I have no idea where they got that song from. This is your birthday song. <laughs> is that how it goes? Yep. <laughs> I mean, for as long as it played, I can't remember like a single word of it, but something about birthdays. <laughs> Trevor's got it. Yeah, I got it nailed. I've heard it a half dozen, hundred times. <laughs> Somewhere in between. <laughs> <laughs> also, when the season ends, I think a skeleton crew stays on to like accept packages and in case there's a storm and they need to move the ship away, they're able to do that. So... Does manganese incrustation, is that a function of depth, current flow, temperature? Like what, what determines how thickly the manganese doth crust? So probably what determines the thickness is, okay. This is one of the things that we're trying to <laughs> tease out. We still don't fully know. Um, what would make some a crust more thick would probably be how long it's been uh, the length of deposition. So as I said, like the average time is about one to 10 millimeters per million years. 
so thicker crusts are probably going to be older. Um, however, there are times when you can have a hiatus in crust growing, uh, so it's not fair to just assume that it's con constantly growing all the time. Uh, if you want more enriched crust, uh, we generally tend to see those near or closer to OMZs because uh, changing the redox chemistry will be able to change some of what the crusts get to grab out of the seawater. So like for instance, cobalt is easier to grab out of the seawater when you're near an OMZ. Sorry, I'm over here trying to figure out how to like send a report to Google. Like, this is not right. It's like a whole extra decimal over here. You're really mad at them. I'm really mad at them. That's very wrong. Cables? Sounds like cables. Is it in meters or something? Yeah. No, it's in miles. It's 2,562.43 miles. And then in the kilometers, it's at 4,123.83 kilometers. From where we are to where Honolulu is? Yeah. From our Do you have where we are, correct? Uh, maybe. Are you using uh, like, the, the data coming from data, or did you just like type in a coordinate? <laughs> There's I, a lot I, of questions at 6 a.m. I'm sorry. Yeah. but <laughs> uh, No, I used uh, the coordinates from the high pack. Okay. Huh. Why? Why? What? 162.301. Oh, oh, I know what happened. Oh, ho, ho. Um, when I typed it in, it converted it, uh, <laughs> but it didn't convert it correctly. <laughs> it just assumed that I was, uh, it took the decimal and converted it into, um, um, yeah. Minutes and yeah, yeah, but it did it not right. <laughs> this is not correct. So Google's not wrong. It just made it a bad confused. assumption. It's just not right. It's just not right. It's not wrong. It's just... <laughs> Ooh, on the manganese topic, so many manganese fans this morning. I love it. Yeah. Do you know what the thickest crust is that's been observed? Um, that I don't know. <laughs> How about it, have you cut any open yet? Uh, from Roger. this cruise, no. Yeah. What are you waiting for? I need to use. The, I need to see that rock saw. Wait, didn't you? I just said that it's not working. Oh no, I was not listening. I was just <laughs> <laughs> clicking on the map. to Google. <laughs> Just trying to be mad at Google. Yeah, Adam tried to cut open a rock and uh, it failed. And the the sad thing about the manganese crust is that they're kind of brittle, um, and so oh, they eye. fall apart really easily. So once you start cutting it open, like you kind of have to be really careful with it. And he was not careful, and the whole Zoom rock in, kind of just fell apart. Man. Okay, what is it? cool. We've got a bamboo coral. This is an unbranched bamboo coral. It looks like it's missing a few polyps. Do you see nodes? Um, the nodes are going to be really lightly colored because of how small this is, but there should be one right there. Right, right, right here. Let me just move and mess up your telescope. Yeah. <laughs> But um, yeah, you don't necessarily need Long. to see the nodes in order to know it's a bamboo. Um, it's got these sort of like little red mouths and long intertentacular spines. So those are these um, little spines that are coming out in between the tentacles of the, the polyps. Yeah, so this is a bamboo coral. But yeah, like you see there's like a little bit of discoloration. That's where the nodes are. They're just not that deep, dark brown color that you're used to seeing. And it, that could be a function of how um, thick with sclerites the tissue is. Just looks a little bit milky or just how young it is. It hasn't developed that dark color. Um, there could be a number of reasons why the nodes are difficult to see. Uh, the person says this is a silly question. To, uh, it's not a silly question. It's a simple question. <laughs> Just not. There's a difference. Um, the temperature is showing as 1.5 degrees Celsius. Um, how cold does it get? Is there anything like pressure that stops it from reaching zero degrees Celsius? Yeah, the water will never get to freezing. 
It would just be solid. And it's probably, it wouldn't freeze this deep because of pressure. Yep. There's a neat Chrysogorgia coral. So this one's different than that wispy one that we made a collection of earlier. It's Even more of a typical um, look for the Chrysogorgia. So this one's planar. It looks like it has two planes. So this could be a Chrysogorgia chryceris. And there's a little associate. Might be an anemone in the branches. So right there. Oh. Oop. Cool. Thank you. Very cool. So we might be getting into a more corally place. <laughs> yes, you called. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like you really should just switch tracks and start studying corals. That would be more fun. I'm not allowed to because my mucus roommate studies corals. <laughs> Interdormal yes. conflict. Plus, anytime someone says coral or like coral reef, I like automatically I'm like, what? Like, I would just think people were talking to me the whole time. Yeah, well, and then they would. If you study corals, you'd have all the answers. <laughs> Looking good. I would like to put in a quest for a jellyfish. You can make that happen. I'll put that in the suggestion box. I'll do my best. Thanks. There have been there's been a lack of jellyfish. Well, if we were looking at the blue water, we'd definitely see more jellyfish. That's but true. we're looking at the bottom, so it's less likely. But when we make our um, toe across from um, this sort of mini uh, ridge arm of the seamount over to the main mass of the seamount, we will likely see a lot of interesting midwater creatures as we make our way across. I'm holding you to that. Yep. Mm -hmm. But, you know, we'll be at breakfast then. So. Or, or in maybe. bed. Or in bed. Does everyone in this van right now nap after breakfast? Or? I just uh, skip breakfast and go straight to nap. <laughs> no, I stopped napping after I found my sea legs. Really? No, oh, I can sleep at night. Yeah, Google's wrong. I wish <laughs> I could nap. I have to go take a shower and prepare for that seminar. I don't want to look crusty on the uh, crusty on what I'm talking uh -huh, about uh -huh, my crusts. Uh -huh. <laughs> We have a chat request for a giant sea spider, so Ocean, if you could provide. Maybe when we get shallower, we'll see those. I don't think we'll see them 
Right anything? now, we're still a bit deep. Oh, yep, here's another unbranched bamboo coral. Oh, I see a node. Yep, yep, there it is. I've noticed that a lot of these um, deeper bamboo corals are unbranched. And they don't seem to get as large as some of the ones that are up higher on the seamount. I think it's really interesting uh, if we just compare the last two dives we had on Seamount C and Seamount G and now this is Seamount F. This um, dive seems to be a bit sparser at the same depth uh, in comparison to the other two. At least the other two we saw a lot of those Romilogorgia militaris almost consistently spaced across the Seamount as we made our way up. but. Here, I've only seen one colony of Romilogorgia, and then um, there have been a couple other corals, uh, some Chrysogorgia, and we saw a couple a couple Bathypathies, uh, a couple Primnoa corals, a couple of those uh, bamboo corals, but just just not that many, and that just goes to show that. You know, the dist distribution of these corals in the deep sea is relatively patchy. Um, and we've been seeing a lot of large boulders and cobbly areas, and those aren't as um, great for, for coral growth just because those, you know, smaller rocks can move. Whereas here, we're, we have sort of a consolidated substrate that's a nice bedrock, which should be a better environment for corals to grow, but we're not seeing them. So that might speak to the fact that maybe the current here isn't as consistently good for coral growth. Um, maybe the lar larvae aren't getting to this arm of the seamount and settling. Um, we just don't really know exactly what might be causing the, the lack of coral here. Uh, in comparison to other lo locations, but at this depth, we're not expecting to see high-density communities, but I would have expected to see a bit more, um, just more frequently, a colony uh, it, that in a similar pattern as what we saw on the other seamounts. So just sort of comparing across a bit anecdotally, just based on what I remember, but what, when it comes down to annotating, after we annotate, we can really compare uh, the communities to each other. You know, not just uh, one person's thought on what something looks like, because that might not always be true. You know, I have such a small snapshot right here of what the community looks like. Um, and it could be that I'm just not spotting everything uh, or remembering correctly what we saw at the exact same depths, but it would be really, really interesting to compare these transects that we're making um, from low down on the seamount up to the summit across the seamounts within this chain to see how similar they are in terms of community uh, density and diversity. Uh, and maybe that changes with where the seamount is positioned within the chain. We've got a, a, a group of fourth graders from Bayer School in Arizona. Hi, Bayer School. Hey. We're wondering how much energy it takes to run Hercules. Do we know? Sorry, I was drinking water. Um, how much <laughs> energy? Yeah, how do we power this thing? Well, I, I had one cup of coffee. <laughs> um. 
Well, if you want real numbers, here we go. 476 volts. And then on each phase, we're pulling about 40, 41 amps. Three phase. 446 volts. Oh. 476 volts. How much is that? Like, what, is, what else could be powered by that? Well, uh, if you live in North America, most things are powered by 120 volt. And then your oven or dryer are 220 volt. In Europe, everything's 220 volt. And a lot of other, anyway, a lot of regional differences in different parts of the world. Uh, 480 volt nominal uh, three phase is used for not household stuff, heavy machinery, industrial stuff like that. Hard to get three phase service to anyone's house, but a lot of industrial shops will have that for large machinery. And her classifies as large machinery. I would say so. It's like about seven feet tall, isn't it? Yeah. What is that thing that was circled? I just spotted a primnoid coral. So uh, I'd like a nice zoom of this to see if it is a norella. So what Go I'm ahead. looking for is the in. polyps and which direction they might close and how many body scales if we can see them. Mm. Yeah, so this, this does look like a norella. Ooh. And um, Bonk. there's a little opossum shrimp on the branches, its scientific name is Mycida. And so I definitely see those three body scales. And if the uh, polyps were to close, they should close in a downward direction along the branches. All right, great. Follow-up question, would Argus be about the same? They're on the same power system, correct? Exactly. Yeah, that's the power used to power both vehicles. We don't really separate out uh, how much power is used by one or the other. They're off the same wire. Bridge nav, another um, one zero zero meter move, uh, bearing two zero zero. Ooh, does EV Nautilus use any eco power, wind or solar? What was that? Sorry. Does EV Nautilus use any eco power, wind or solar? I don't have. I haven't seen any solar panels. Uh, wind affects everything in the ocean. Oh, all right. <laughs> <laughs> sometimes we're struggling against it. Sometimes. <laughs> yeah, I'd say we come out net zero on that. Sometimes it's making us almost slide out of bed. <laughs> the geology fans have given away to ROV fans. Neato. What is used as the power source? Solar, diesel, not solar. Diesel. Everything on the ship is powered by diesel. Diesel generators make electricity and spin the propellers and all the other bits on the ship, on the ROVs, on everything. Um, another ROV question, if one is uh, using a lot of power, you know, full steam ahead, full thruster, um, does that restrict the um, energy consumption or capacity or performance of the other ROV? These are good questions. Nope, we're uh, ready to do everything all at once, all the time, both ROVs. Full beans, as it were.
Oh, this is super technical. What voltage and amperage flows through the uh, 6 8 cable? I'll come back to that question in a minute. Absolutely. All right, what was that question? Uh, what voltage and amperage flows through the 6-8 cable? Good question. Oh, someone called me out. <laughs> All right. Well, let's, the short answer to that question is 2,600 volts-ish at the top end. And, I don't know, 11, 13 amps? I don't know, something like that. But some astute viewer noticed that I said 470 volts and 40 amps. And they're like, that's not right. So, good question. So, let's do a quick power run through. The ship generates 50 hertz, 380 volt, which is a more of a higher voltage European standard versus the North American standard of 480. We take that power, we step it up to 480, three phase, and that is then stepped up again to 2800, 2600 volts. By the time it gets to the ROVs, it's 2,400 volts, where we step it down to 120 volts. All sorts of different steps. Um, so, the reason we do all that, high voltage transmits better in long wires because there's lower amperage, which means you lose less to heat, you need smaller conductors, and generally it's just more effective. Um, the motor, hydraulic motor on Hercules, actually runs at high voltage at 2400 volts and then nothing else in the world runs at 2400 volts so we step it back down to the same thing as you'd find coming out of your wall in North America to power all the computers and lights and sensors on Hercules. So when I was given the power output I was reading off the one of my readouts here which shows the power input to the transformer that steps it up to the 68 voltage and that's just a baseline we use the same spot uh, measure at the same spot along that chain the whole uh, all the time so that we get consistent readings and that's where those numbers come from and do you know the output rating of the generator no i do not it's several several kilowatts but many many kilowatts many many is the answer no i don't have any idea 50 per generator is an arbitrary random guess and we have many generators i have no idea though we're gonna run you through all of your numbers this morning because someone wants to know what the gripping force of the manipulatory arm is uh nine units just nine <laughs> yeah the we have units it goes that. from zero to nine <laughs> yeah, it goes from one to nine actually one yeah. to nine. wait why grip force one grip force nine grip force six whatever why not up to ten Make well, it a nice only, only one digit. <laughs> Honestly, I have no idea. There's a script force setting on the on the controller. It allows you to choose between grip force one and nine. Um. Oh, a, a Trevor, a personal Trevor question. Do you prefer a two ROV system like the Nautilus or one ROV system like Falcor? 
they each have their benefits. Um, this gives you a sweet third person view, which I don't know, it's great for navigation and great for sweet imagery and gives you water column sensor data, et cetera, et cetera. So there's advantages to that. But a single body, you can do a lot. I don't know, you can do a lot of other different things as well. Get farther away from the ship versus a 30 meter tether. You could do uh, three frame lifting for more engineering work. Um, easier to move and demob on mobile systems because there's only one vehicle to move. Thank you for that in depth ROV walkthrough. We've got a guest in the van. Hello, sir. Morning, everybody. I'm Adam Sewell. Hello. How did you get here? Uh, I took the stairs. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Thinking. I just want to see uh, what was happening. Get your workout in for the morning. Yeah, right. <laughs> now I can eat that bacon. <laughs> I'm counting my steps. I'm up to 15. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I count those stair steps, though, as they're double steps. So, Especially on the maybe right 50. Roll. <laughs> I was doing push-ups yesterday, and one was a normal push-up. Okay, humble brag. <laughs> no, no. no, no. One was a normal push-up, and then I went down, and like, I don't know, I think someone sat on top of me. <laughs> <laughs> the ship said, like, you will you know. stay down. <laughs> if you get it just right, you can do a couple clapper push-ups without even trying. It's awesome. Yeah, that's exciting. I did that while I was asleep last night. <laughs> <laughs> Wake up midair, like, oh, oh hi. <laughs> Clap. Got to get my workout in. <laughs> Been there. Now, unfortunately, because of our heading, I am, again, sliding from head to toe instead of Ooh. side to side. It's not cool. That grip force question, a better way to explain that is, imagine a like a an empty pop can. If you squeeze it on grip force one with the manipulator, it will not crush an empty pop can. If you have a full unopened one and you do it on grip force nine, it'll crush it and explode it. That's very uh, qualitative, but oh, that's should good. give someone an understanding. Do you mean a soda can? <laughs> nope, not doing that again. Uh, We're not going out of that dark pathway. What? What's soda? Well, it's soda in the States. So what do you got there, Megan? What's that? So one? we have a Prominoid Coral. It's got a um, rhinoid on it and also a Brittle Star. It's a really red sea cucumber. Really red. I haven't seen that color. Tomato soup. Is that the ketchup cuke? Is that the common name for that? The ketchup cuke. Like a squeeze of ketchup. And then there's a grape flavored cuke. Mm. There's the pink lemonade cuke yeah. right up there. <laughs> Everything's food. Mm -hmm. It's not time to talk about food yet. We got another 18 minutes and 45 seconds before we can talk about food. Oh, okay. Exactly. Yep. UTC. So what types of corals have you been seeing so far? Um, so we we saw some bathopathies, the black coral, uh, early on, but haven't seen some in quite some time. We made a collection of that. Mm -hmm. um, then we saw these really wispy chrysogorgic corals, which we made a collection of that I didn't recognize. Um, but then we've seen some other, you know, normal chrysogorgia, sort of planar looking colonies. Um, some Norella, so those are those primnoid corals. We saw some unbranched bamboo coral, um, and I saw a couple Rumilogorgia militaris, the uh, sort of wispy white corals that we saw on the other seamounts. But it's been pretty sparse mm -hmm. for, for most of our watch. Um, a coral here and there, but just lots of good views of rocks. We've been Excellent. seeing lots of rocks. I, I knew you'd like that. Uh -huh. You know, each one has a story to tell, Megan. Mm -hmm. 
Mm-hmm. Yeah. Every rock. Want me to halt for a sec? I'm sure every coral has a story to tell, too. Well, their yeah. stories are all kind of the same, but each rock has a different... Yeah, why don't I look at this <laughs> thing? <I'm just> <laughs> Ooh. Yeah, that, that sea star has a story to tell. It's definitely lost some arms. <laughs> like, oh my god, you're never going to believe. <laughs> like, there was this day. They will regrow their arms, but it's a slow process. Good question. You can see where there's there's some missing. Do limbs. they regrow them symmetrically, or do they just go wild sometimes? Um, these ones will regrow symmetrically. Good, because so nothing upsets me more than a, an unbalanced starfish. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so it looks like this one's missing about four limbs. The Maybe someone took a bite out of it or something. They're all in the same spot. What eats a star like this? Uh, I'm not sure. Maybe a fish? Okay. Isn't this yeah. fairly like crunchy here? there? It would be kind of crunchy. I sure. don't know how nutritious Ooh, it would be. Oh, one of be. those two. Yeah, let's do one of those two. Yeah, pick your poison. I don't like where it is right now. I think it's wrong. But this is a Brasingid sea star, like and yeah. so they feed sure, by the lifting that's their the arms the up into said, the water my column. My favorite ever. And yeah. when we were zoomed in, you could see sort of like little <laughs> sticky <laughs> balls on the ends of those spines. It's all hand waving anyway. And so they they use oh, those spines nice as a way to fish. capture. Oh yeah. First fish of the day. Hooray. Let's zoom on a this fish. fish, please. Got it. This is a cutthroat eel in the family Synaphobranchidae. What's he sniffing about? They like to hide their heads it's from the light. It's got something in its mouth. It's got a shrimp, right? Oh, does oh, it yeah, have nice. a shrimp? Oh, yeah. Doesn't want to share his breakfast, which is fair. Oh, wow. Right at the end of my oh, time. Oh, can have here. another. Another shrimp. Oh, it's going back up again. Backing it up. <laughs> yum, yum. Look at that. Oh, yeah. That's quite cool. I'm going to go get that other one now. Oh, oh no, that one's too smart. <laughs> nope, oh, maybe it's not. Maybe not. Uh, <laughs> no, going to save his buddy. What's okay, happening? Okay, come on, please. <laughs> yep. Saw a couple snail trails there. Yeah. That was really cool. I didn't mm. know they ate shrimp. Yeah, it seems like a lot of animals eat small crustaceans. Small crustaceans are definitely top of the menu. Bummer to be a small crustacean. Yeah, it's definitely a hard life. It's probably why some of those shrimps decide to live inside the sponges. Mm, right. And they die of boredom instead. <laughs> Well, you know, that's how you have a life is uh, not being, if you're bored and, and you have a life or you could just be like that shrimp and uh, maybe not. <laughs> maybe not have a life. Maybe, maybe not have a life. <laughs> just I, I don't know. You know, it, it's, a, it's a dangerous world out there. If you the stay inside your home, you know, you'll be safe. But if you venture out, maybe not. Uh, it's very cliffy here. All yeah. Of a sudden. Might get more interesting as we go up. Actually, isn't that the plot to Finding Nemo? Like, don't leave the house. Yep. Like. <laughs> These look like pillow lovers. Mm -hmm. Yes. You know what, Coralie? Yes. <laughs> Why is the biologist making rocks o rock observations? What are you doing over there? I make rock observations all the time. I know. Yeah. Coralie, where are you? I'm right here. So it's be like, <laughs> oh my gosh, look at all these rocks. Ah. <laughs> uh, physical fitness, qu or I guess ship life question. How does the crew and team maintain physical fitness? Or is it mostly a desk job? True, it, true we go team? up and down the stairs. It also Sour depends on the, the person that you are. I mean, if you didn't work out on shore, you're not going to work out at sea probably. 
There's a gym on board too. Yeah, Is totally it, not true. I never work out at home. I work, I work out much out, more on the ship. Work out every oh, single really? day on the it's ship. It's so much easier to have a routine on the ship. Yeah. See, I'm the uh, well. See, I'm I'm not the opposite, but I work out every day on shore. I would love to work out every day on the ship, but my schedule changes every day, so I don't always know when I can get there. I'm pretty consistent yeah. though. It's a lot less. The gym's now. the gym's complete with a freezer and a moon pool. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, it's the ambiance. Yep. So, um, but yes, climbing the stairs as the ship is heaving uh, <laughs> is enough of the workout <laughs> a lot of times. Sometimes it's just getting into bed if you live on the top bunk. Oh, man. At the end of every day, I just look at the ladder and it's like sigh. Can we take a look at that sponge? Sponge. I can't tell if it's like dead or what's going on here. Let's go check out the sponge, please. Zoom ah, in. Ah, yeah, it's dead. It looked Look a little bit hairstyle. crazy. Yeah, all the spicules are going in every direction. Um, but the sponge has uh, has passed away. It's no longer alive. You can tell that because of how brown and and. Uh, full of sediment, the tissue looks, the spicules are just covered in it. But I, I do enjoy this uh, change in geology with the, all these round lobate pillows. Someone in the chat says that the rocks look like a big pile of soft serve ice cream. I could totally go for some ice cream. Turns out we don't have any. Turns no, out. No, we have some. some. We have some. Oh, we don't. So are we like saving it for Sunday? Yeah. Okay. Sunday fun day. Ice cream rations. Sunday, Sunday. I found that uh, corals seem to like these uh, nice pillows, lava pillows. And look here, we've got some Norella coral. Got some kudos from a former uh, galley cook saying that we are the most entertaining to watch. He wants, uh, they want to know um, if they have a lot of choices for breakfast meal. Yeah, all sorts of different types of eggs, bacon, boiled eggs, French toast, tater tots. Mm -hmm. Crepes sometimes. Yep. Wait, they have tater tots? Like every tater day, barrels. all day. Potato barrels. Potato barrels? I like that name. Yeah, that's what they're called. There's the, that's the off-brand. Oh, okay. But everyone calls them tater tots. We know what you really are. They say we need, a, we need a galley cam. Totally true. I would love to watch them. Can you zoom in on this thing, please? Look at the tiny, tiny sponge. Oh, It's so small. I think this might be a, a small caliphacus. more ship life class.